Good morning, everyone. So good to see you this morning. It is one of my favorite days of the year. It is St. Andrew's Day. Laura, why do you like St. Andrew's Day? Ah, uh, why? I like many of the saints. So as much as I appreciate Andrew, he's he's not on my favorite. I've got some ones pretty close to my heart. Um, the story of Andrew that I like the best, which of course is legend, as is many things in those days, was that he was in Patras, Greece, and the wife of the Roman proconsulate, proconsul, proconsul, big cheese, big cheese in Rome, uh, was cured and became a believer, and that uh, that upset the proconsul. Uh, and he ordered him uh, crucified. Um, legend has it that Andrew said he was not worthy to be crucified in the same manner as his Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the other story is uh, they wanted to bury him on the on the the X cross upside down so he could not see the earth or his executioners. Um, and then uh, the other the other bit is the story of the Scottish flag, which I just learned today, is uh, they were in battle in the ninth century and Oginus, pardon my pronunciation, the night before the battle prayed that uh, St. Andrew protect them and he would be named the patron of Scotland if he did. In the morning they woke up to a beautiful blue sky with uh, cloud, fluffy white clouds in the shape of St. Andrew's cross. They took that as a sign and won the battle, even though they were heavily outnumbered. And that is the Scottish flag today. That is called the Saltier Cross. Yes. And uh, yeah, so Andrew is, uh, is the brother of our patron, Peter. Um, so it was Peter and Andrew, uh, and also James and John, who were sons of Zebedee, who were the first called. Uh, Andrew is, as you say, is famous for being crucified on the Saltier Cross. Um, and this is a big day in Scotland, actually. There are multiple celebrations uh, for St. Andrew's Day on a lot of different levels. The one that is my favorite is the, um, is the Bobby Burns uh, suppers that people will have, which is a massive haggis is brought to a table, piped in with uh, people reciting the Robert Burns poetry, Ode to a Haggis. Um, and uh, anyway, it is, it is one of those celebrations. The other aspect of this, which makes uh, Andrew peculiarly Anglican, is that the Brotherhood of St. Andrew, which is a fraternal organization in the Episcopal Church, and the only religious organization chartered by the United States Congress, um, started by Teddy Roosevelt back in the day, um, is one of the uh, primary uh, primary leadership organizations for outreach, study, and prayer for men in the in the uh, Episcopal Church. So, Brotherhood of Saint Andrew, the Saint Andrew's Cross, Saint Andrew's Scotland, the birth of golf. We could go on and on, um, and of course, you know, fishing. So, because he was a fisherman at heart. Uh, so all those things and more. So we remember Andrew, brother of Peter, follower of our Lord Jesus Christ, apostle, saint, and martyr. All right. All around good guy. All around good guy. <laughs> and uh, and I also really like this particular sculpture. It is it is a rather old wood sculpture uh, that is in the, one of the museums in Scotland. So I think it captures some of that soul of 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 the of the of the fisherman saint. Uh, please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, follow us on Facebook, give us all the support you can on our socials so we can welcome others home to St. Peter's, but know that we're happy to have you with us. If you have any intercessions or thanksgivings, feel free to tender those in the comments. And I see that Betty Lemansky is on. She is our native Scottish lass. She is, uh, she is a wee baron of Scotland and uh, we are hey, glad, Betty. And we're glad to have her with us. So on we go. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Let us humbly confess our sins unto almighty God. Almighty and most merciful father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. 
We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please join me in unison for the antiphon and invitatory. Our King and Savior draweth nigh. O come, let us adore him. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore, I have gazed upon you in your holy place that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. Our King and Savior draweth nigh. O come, let us adore him. Portion of Psalm 119. I'll offer the odd verses. Please respond with the even. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him with their whole heart. Who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have, you have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then, I, then shall, I shall not be put to shame. Having my eyes. Having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. How can young people keep their way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart, I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will, I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant so that I may live and observe your word. Open my eyes so that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. I live as an alien in the land. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your ordinances at all times. You rebuke the insolent, accursed ones who wander from your commandments. Take away from me their scorn and contempt, for I have kept your decrees. Even though princes sit plotting against me, your servant will meditate on your statutes. Your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, 
some son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. For you have forsaken the ways of your people, O house of Jacob. Indeed, they are full of diviners from the east and of soothsayers like the Philistines, and they clasp their hands with foreigners. Their land is filled with silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land is filled with horses, and there is no end to their chariots. Their land is filled with idols, they bow down to the work of their hands, to what their own fingers have made. And so people are humbled and everyone is brought low. Do not forgive them. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord and from the glory of his majesty. The haughty eyes of people shall be brought low and the pride of everyone shall be humbled. And the Lord alone will be exalted in that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle is the second song of Isaiah. Together, seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you receive the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it, not as a human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work in you believers. For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of the churches of God in Christ, Jesus, that are in Judea. For you suffered the same things from your own compatriots as they did from the Jews, who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out. They displeased God and opposed everyone by hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. Thus they have constantly been filling up the measure of their sins, but God's wrath has overtaken them at last. As for us, brothers and sisters, when for a short time we were made orphans by being separated from you in person, not in heart, we longed with great eagerness to see you face to face, for we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, wanted to again and again, but Satan blocked our way. For what is our hope or joy or crown of boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? Yes, you are our glory and joy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, A Song to the Lamb, together. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. 
and yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Almighty God, who gave such grace to your apostle Andrew, that he readily obeyed the call of your son, Jesus Christ, and brought his brother with him. Give us who are called by your holy word grace to follow him without delay and to bring those near to us into his gracious presence, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O heavenly Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray thee so to guide and govern us by thy Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget thee, but may remember that we are ever walking in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee for the honor of thy name. Amen. Please join me in a prayer attributed to St. Francis. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I welcome your intercessions and thanksgivings. Prayers for all who work in law enforcement and correctional facilities, that they be guided with mercy and compassion, and that your protection surround them as they do their work. Amen. We pray for Linda, who is preparing for surgery today. Pray for all who are struggling with grief or pain. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Niamlel, the province of the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. And in the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for all of the St. Andrew's churches in the Diocese, Allenhurst, Camden, Lambertville, Mount Holly, and New Providence. 
We give thanks for the ministry of our Dean at the Cathedral, the very Reverend Rene John. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we then unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you, thee, and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and hast promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, everyone, thank you for being with us today. We appreciate your presence. Do join us at noon for Eucharist or morning or, or noonday prayers, depending upon whether people show up or not. As always, the Holy Spirit always does. So whatever's going to happen, we're going to pray together. Join us as well this evening at 5 p.m. for evening prayer. It's a relatively quiet day. We just have a ton of work going on with regard to our community supper reasserting itself after having had a little holiday break. And we look forward to seeing you there if you are hungry or just in need of some fellowship. Please be reminded that St. Peter's will be showing out in force for a Stuff the, stuff the Truck uh, uh, episode at the uh, Spotswood Christmas Tree Lighting. I'll be delivering the invocation for that. Look forward to celebrating with you on Saturday evening. After, of course, the U.S. does a great job against Holland, or Holland does a great job against the U.S. Either way, <laughs> may it be a good game is what we care about. All things being well, please like and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, enjoy your World Cup coverage, and all things know that we are blessed to be able to welcome you home to St. Peter's. We will see you soon. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.